Uh, so. David, where, where did your um, voracious appetite and imagination for expressionist art, where did that come from? I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm curious about the world around me in general. And, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly, you know, my mother pointed me towards her interests and she was a sculptress and painter and, and so, Anne yes, and so she would take me to museums with her and, and you know, we, when we traveled it was a part of growing up, uh, you had a box of crayons to sit on the bench and, and when you're eight so that she can go look at the pictures and you don't disturb anyone yeah. and eventually you look up, see what's around you. But I think that, that some place for all of us, somewhere in, in our teenage years and into our early 20s, we begin to find what actually interests us personally. And uh, uh, in that moment of awakening, you, you sometimes will ignite some passions about things that are, are important to you, they're special. But what is it about the abstract forms, use of color, use of shape, not rock music, you weren't yeah. joining a version of the Young Beatles, you weren't I didn't have Peter a Pass Mirai freaking out, you were into images on canvas that uh, that astounded and confused most people. Well, I, w I, w I, w I, uh, I, I didn't have a, a band in the garage, <laughs> you know, it was, it, it, I, I think that uh, um, partly, uh, you know, just fortuitous accident and then curiosity and, and, and people who kept challenging me, you know, I, I, I would make a choice or, or point to something because if you have a gallery, that's what you're doing. You're saying, that's what interests me. There's the artist I want to show. And, uh, and people would come in and say, why? Why that artist? Why not some other artist? Or you'd find yourself in a discussion with artists, what's important in what they do? How are they speaking? It, it's, it, it, an abstraction seemed to hold the most difficulty to make sense out of and the most expressive opportunities if you were successful with it. If you, it was hard to make something uh, because you had to find the context for it. There, it wasn't, I mean, people do, don't make abstract paintings by accident. There's a, uh, there's a lot of circumstance around it that drives it. And uh, we seem, in fact, at, at any given time, figuration never disappears. And often, even in abstraction, uh, it's very hard to be totally abstract, uh, to not you, have referenced anything at when all. When you enjoy a painting, yeah. uh, you know, a Pollock or a Stella or Newman or whatever, is it an intellectual enjoyment for you, knowing the context? No, it's emotional. Is it emotional? It's ultimately emotional. Uh, it's emotional and it's personal and it's individual and it's a sum of experiences. It's a, it, it's a sum of my experiences with other paintings, with other circumstances, with the moment that I'm in, uh, and unpredictable in some senses that, uh, that I'll have the exact same reaction to even the same picture on a different day under different circumstances. I mean, it's an accumulation of life's experiences from the viewer and from the giver who creates the work. Uh, there is a play called Red at the moment, uh, came out last year that w talks about Rothko, but it slags off Frank Stella because Frank was nipping at Rothko's heels in the, uh, in the opinion, at least, of the author of this play. And certainly that generation of artists, uh, their pictures changed every year or every two years. And if you look at a career of an artist like Frank Stella, there are maybe, Frank has worked in series and the series are not quite as simple as it looks because there are the, con the, the junctures between and the movements and it's pretty complex, but you can break it down to something between 41 and 45 different series of works. And for some people, it's all radically, radically different. Right. And it th breaks into almost two careers. And how do you connect this artist who is in some ways the bedrock and roots of, of minimalism with a foot in pop art and a foot in uh, post painterly abstraction and yet totally original and uh, and how do you connect the end of his career with the beginning and yet there is a, an absolute
continuum, and that show is yet to be done. You know, that speaks to that. Uh, it's, it's being done in bits and pieces as we go, but there's a major retrospective planned for the Whitney in 2015 where we'll have a chance to actually see the career and see what, you know, and Frank will be almost 80 at that point.